Welcome back to Mad Medicine. In this lecture, we're going to be discussing Porphyria cutanea tarda. We've already discussed acute intermittent porphyria, so if you guys haven't watched that video, go to our YouTube channel, YouTube forward slash Mad Medicine, and there you can find the, porphyria, the acute intermittent porphyria video in a playlist titled Hemonk for the step one. Now, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. It'll really help us out because we're posting brand new step one videos every day. Now, porphyrias are a set of metabolic disorders that are caused by altered or defective activities of the enzymes that are involved in heme synthesis. Now, we've already talked about heme synthesis in a previous video. You can check that out in the playlist. Now, there are many different types of porphyrias that depend on the mutation that occurs in the pathway. Now, for step one, you don't need to know all of them. You only need to know two types, which is good for you because you don't have to study too many porphyrias. The two types you definitely need to know are acute intermittent porphyria. We've already talked about that. And porphyria cutanea tarda, which we're going to be discussing today. Sweet, baby. All right. So both of these are going to follow autosomal dominant inheritance pattern. Keep that in the back of your mind. Both acute intermittent porphyria and porphyria cutanea tarda are going to follow autosomal dominant patterns. Now, porphyria cutanea tarda is the most common porphyria that occurs that, and that's something you definitely need to know. Most likely, it's going to be porphyria cutanea tarda, and this is associated with hepatitis C. Now, what's happening in this disease is that you have a partial deficiency of an enzyme called uroporphyrinogen decarboxylase. Uroporphyrinogen decarboxylase, that is a mouthful, but get ready for this. This enzyme, uroporphyrinogen decarboxylase, converts uroporphyrinogen 3 to coproporphyrinogen 3. Now try saying that five times in a row. Uroporphyrinogen decarboxylase converts uroporphyrinogen 3 to coproporphyrinogen 3. Man, that's, that's, that's hard. That's something you should tell people to say. Anyways, let's see where this is actually happening. This right here is aside from our heme synthesis uh, lecture. Just a side note, in that lecture, unfortunately, we had a typo. It said that uroporphyrinogen 2 gets converted into coproporphyrinogen 3. It's actually uroporphyrinogen 3. We messed up. We put a 2 instead of a 3. So anyways, back to this topic. In porphyria, 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 God, porphyria cutanea tarda, uh, what's happening is that you have a defective uroporphyrinogen decarboxylase enzyme, which is located right here. This is the enzyme that's messed up, and this is the enzyme associated with this disease. Now, what ends up happening is because you cannot proceed on with the pathway, you're going to have decreased production of protoporphyrin. You're going to have decreased production of heme, but you're going to have increased uh, production of uroporphyrinogen 3. And that's the main defining factor. So where is this disease taking place? Is it taking place right here? Uh, acute intermittent porphyria takes place right here, by the way. So you can watch that in a previous video. Now, when it comes to porphyria cutanea tarda, because uroporphyrinogen decarboxylase is not functioning properly, you're not going to be able to convert uroporphyrinogen 3 to coproporphyrinogen 3. And that's going to lead to a buildup of uroporphyrin. What is uroporphyrin? Well, uroporphyrin is the uroporphyrinogen in the oxidized form. So let's write that out really quickly. So when you have uroporphyrin, Porphyrinogen 3 and you oxidize it, what you're going to end up having is uroporphyrin. So uroporphyrin, now that is the main enzyme, or the, sorry, that's the main molecule that's being elevated in porphyria cutanea tarda. That's what ends up happening. You're going to have an overproduction of uroporphyrin, and this is going to become uh, deposited in the skin. It's going to transport itself to the skin where it gets deposited and causes damage. So that's pretty high yield. So in this side, what you definitely need to understand is that the enzyme that is defective is called uroporphyrinogen decarboxylase. And the reason uh, you get these symptoms is because you have a lack of conversion of uroporphyrinogen 3 to coproporphyrinogen 3 and that's going to lead to an increase in uroporphyrin and that is all very high yield for porphyria cutanea tarda. Keep that in the back of your mind. Keep it in the front of your mind. Keep it in your mind. Anyways, what uh, now we're going to talk about the symptoms of porphyria. As you know, the uroporphyrin is going to get deposited in the skin and because it gets deposited, you're going to have chronic 
blistering in the skin on exposure to sunlight or alcohol. Now, what does that sound like to you? To me, it sounds like a vampire. And then we searched it up. Surprisingly, people think that Porphyria cutinea tarda is the disease that vampires have been uh, modeled off of. That's actually something a lot of people think uh, that uh, the origin of vam vampires came from people who were suffering from Porphyria cutinea tarda, which is pretty uh, interesting to me. Now, because of this chronic blistering to the sun being uh, to the skin when it's exposed to sunlight, these patients are going to present with hyperpigmentation of their skin. They're going to have an increased AST to ALT ratio. But the key giveaway that's happening, uh, along with the the skin blistering when they get exposed to sunlight, is going to be tea-colored urine, all because of uroporphyrin. Uroporphyrin is going to get exported in the body, and uh, that's going to lead to tea-colored urine. So, if you see a patient who presents to your uh, clinic or who presents in a vignette for step one with tea colored urine, so let's write that down tea colored urine and blisters due to the sun. Oh, forgot to write two. Due to the sun, you should be thinking about Perferia cutanea tarda. I know I, I, know I wrote PCT, I, I'm simplifying it. Okay, it's not the proximal convoluted tubule. You should be thinking about Perferia cutanea tarda because these two defining features are very specific to Perferia cutanea tarda. Now, when you're diagnosing a patient, you're going to look at their plasma or urine porphyrin levels, specifically porphyrin. Okay, now the porphyrin levels are going to be elevated, and then you can go ahead and do a fractionation of the porphyrin, which will show elevated uroporphyrin. Now that should clue you in to Porphyria cutanea tarda. That is the uh, um, uh, confirmatory test that's going to tell you that you have Porphyria cutanea tarda. When you're treating these patients, the, what you really want to do is phlebotomy. Now keep in mind, in this uh, in this disease, you're going to have an iron overloaded symptom syndrome because you're not going to be able to use iron. You're not going to be able to produce iron. Why is that? Because what ends up happening is is iron Fe2 plus combines with proto porphyrin to make heme normally, right? But because you are not producing protoporphyrin, you're going to have an increase in your iron, and that's going to lead you to an iron overloaded state. Now, that's obviously not good for your body because excess iron gets stored in the liver, and it can actually lead to liver toxicity. Now, the aim is to reduce the iron that is in circulation. You want to reduce iron and uh, if you guys don't know, it's really difficult to reduce iron because our body doesn't really have a way of excreting iron. So the only way you can get rid of excess iron is through phlebotomy. You can also use a drug to treat these patients, and that drug is called hydroxychloroquine. Unfortunately, we don't know the mechanism of action and how it works to treat patients who have porphyria cutinea tarda. And that's good for you guys because you don't need to know what happens. The key takeaway in this slide is going to be phlebotomy is the most high-yield way to treat patients who are suffering from porphyria cutinea tarda along with avoiding the triggers that cause the symptoms like alcohol and sun exposure. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching. That's pretty much everything you need to know for this disease. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. You can also follow us on Instagram at mad.medicine and Twitter at It's Mad Medicine. And if you guys don't know, you can find these lectures on your favorite podcast service for free. Just search Mad Medicine and we'll pop up.